We are exploring New York's wine country, AKA the Finger Lakes region. I'm gonna cheers for you. <laughs> I got the camera. And we see stuff like this. Finger Lake. That's Cayuga Lake. In our recent Harvest Host Wineries video, we said that we were on our way to the Finger Lakes region of New York, and that's this video. Yep, this is our first time out exploring a new area in a long time, definitely our first trip and location post COVID or during COVID, it's not post COVID. Yet. Right, well, post the initial like three month yeah. quarantine period that we did. And we were a little bit nervous and hesitant because we didn't know what to expect. And I think a lot of you out there are probably wondering what's it like right now, traveling and RVing with the COVID pandemic going on. Mm -hmm. And really you just have to be respectful of each state's new regulations and laws and whatever and each, they require. Maybe even each city's. Yeah, and you know, I think no matter where you go, you just have to be smart. You have to wear a mask when you go out. If you're going to a restaurant, you wear a mask in, you wait until they get you to your table and then you can take your mask off. Mm -hmm. Take a look and watch what they're doing. If you see them not cleaning tables or doing anything between customers, then you might just want to leave. We do try to choose places to go and visit that are hopefully less crowded, doing things that are outdoors and right. away from things and yeah and that actually brings us to why we decided to visit the finger lakes area because our plans didn't have us going there we were going mm -hmm. to cape cod and martha's vineyard and mm -hmm. we canceled all that because those are very popular touristy areas and we knew they'd be highly densely packed with people yeah i was actually really really bummed because yeah. we were going to book a cabin on martha's vineyard for a few days and take the bike and explore the whole island and i'd been looking forward to that for a very long time in fact, most of our summer plans that I was really excited about, we had to cancel. Cabot Trail, Nova Scotia, Prince yeah. Edward Island, no all big had deal. to be scrapped. No big deal. We can go there another yeah. time and we're making the best of it. And Finger Lakes actually did not disappoint and we had a blast. Mm -hmm. We picked it because of recommendations from you guys. We mm -hmm. said, well, where are we going to go? We want to go somewhere up in the Northeast still because we still wanted to go to Maine. Several of you recommended the Finger Lakes a area lot of you, yeah. and the winery. We just picked a random place and went. Right. And we weren't quite sure which lake to choose. So we did a little bit of research and we chose a campground on Cayuga Lake. So we arrived in Ovid, New York on a Sunday. It was June 7th, just so you guys have a frame of reference for mm -hmm. what time of the year it was. Yeah, it was a really pretty ride actually, coming off the interstate and going south down the west side of Cayuga Lake mm -hmm. on uh, Route 89. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful drive. So we were getting really excited because yeah. we were like, wow, we picked a pretty area to hang out in for our first COVID, outing. you know, outing. <laughs> yeah. We chose a campground called Sned Acres Family Campground. Yeah, the owner's actually also ex-Navy. It was a really nice campground. They have mm -hmm. a whole new section on the north side that is suitable for big rigs. Mm -hmm. They're all pull-through sites. There was a lot of space there. And the thing is with this property, they could have packed in a whole lot more yeah. RVs, but there was a lot of wide open spaces, which made it really nice and peaceful. And it was sort of divided, I think, into two different sections between maybe seasonal RV yeah. sites and then the transitional RVs, RVers like us, I guess. Yeah, the whole section, I think, on the south side of the park along the tree line was seasonal. Mm -hmm. And then the other side was us transient people. And we had such a cool spot because we were on the very top of the hill. And from our big windows, we could see a little bit of the lake. The lake was right across the street from the campground, but you could really only see the lake when you got up high on the top of the hill. So we could see it. Yeah, a little pro tip. If you're planning a trip like this and you're planning your campground and you need good internet like we do, I try to look for if it's in a hilly area, I want to be on top of the hill Ooh, yeah. versus on the bottom of the hill. Much better chance at getting cell reception. After our first full day there, which of course was a work day, we usually travel on the weekends because of my day job, my nine to five. So our first outing is usually on a Monday after work, mm -hmm. if we even have one. Yeah. 
And we went to the only restaurant we found that was open. Yeah, when we checked into the campground, the owners there said they had just recently gone to a restaurant called O'Malley's that had just opened up for outdoor seating. And we thought, well, cool. We are at our first restaurant in New York, New York, in the Finger Lakes area. And in our minds, we thought, well, there's probably more restaurants around that are also opening up, but we'll check that one out first. Yeah. And it was a really cool place to go, though. Yeah, it was a great restaurant. It's got a beautiful view of the mm -hmm. lake across the street. Mm -hmm. They have all kinds of games and stuff out in the front yard with yeah. some cornhole and yeah. things like that. And kind of a cool place to hang yeah. out. And, and they have beer. And they have beer. You know, we and like food. beer. And, and that food. was really our first restaurant experience out and about traveling in several months. Yeah, it was kind of weird and also cool to be in a restaurant. Yeah. After dinner, we thought, well, let's take the longer drive back to the campground. And we took the route that goes along the lake back up towards the campground. And man, mm. that was pretty. Gorgeous drive around the lake there where you can see all the houses. And some mm. have like houses on this side and like a little boat house yeah. on the water side. It's just really quaint, really neat looking it area. It was a really pretty way to end the evening and our first full day in the Finger Lakes. Yeah. First time we're going out for a ride in the Finger Lakes region. Yeah, we've been out in the truck and it's really pretty. There's some really cool roads by the lakes. We're gonna hit up to Seneca Falls and then over to Geneva. We really didn't know where to go around there. We had met some followers of our channel. Fellow Al, Grand Design owners. Fellow Grand Design mm -hmm. owners, Gwen and Al. Mm -hmm. And they recommended to go over to Geneva. Yeah. So we just got on the bike and headed up that way. Yeah, I think it was basically you go up 89 and then you head west and then Geneva is on the northern tip of Seneca Lake. Seneca Lake, yeah, the mm -hmm. one that was west of us. Right. Yeah. At 40 miles long, Cayuga Lake is the longest finger lake in the region. They're all long and skinny though. It's only, this one was only three and a half miles wide at its widest point. Yeah, but they are pretty deep. And you go through a lot of really beautiful farmland as well as you're going along the lake. But sometimes I really enjoy being on the bike in the evenings in hilly farmland. Yeah, it's really pretty. There's something very relaxing about it. I guess it's because of the pandemic, but it was a ghost town. And this is also a college town, and I believe there are several different colleges in Geneva. And, you there know, it's probably, summer. Yeah, they're probably all, well, it's summer too. And summer then, and yeah, sent home, COVID. Sent home for COVID. But that's true. We just rode around a little bit, but we did ride through the historic district and beautiful homes all oh, along yeah. the lake and stuff. That was really neat. I I love doing that. Seeing looking the architecture at the homes. and the homes and stuff like that. We and did that everywhere evening. we go. It's just kind of neat. Yeah, and it was a beautiful evening. So we really didn't have a destination. We were planning on finding a place to eat while we were in Geneva. Yeah, fail. <laughs> Nothing was open. Our plans failed. <laughs> well, we've got where we were going, just uh, the place we were going to eat closed. So we're well, gonna... it appears that most of the restaurants are closed here yeah. in Geneva. We we're going to go to the Rusty Pig. Yes. 
but that's okay. Yeah. But we're going back towards the campground a different route. A couple days later after work, we wanted to get out and explore and there's a lot of hiking trails and really cool things to do outside in this area. So we decided to go check out Taganic. It took us a while to figure out how to pronounce it and it, <laughs> we had to find a local to tell us. So if we're saying it wrong, it's that local's fault. That's right, not but, our fault. Yeah, we were like Tahanic, Tognock. Tognock, Ahaga, Ta I don't yeah. even know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a weird name. Ta -ha. Ta -ha <laughs> Ta -ha Ta -ha Ta -ha Tuck -ha Tuck -ha Tuck -ha We're at the falls. Tahanic is how I'm going to say it. Tahanic. We're going to check out this gorge trail and go walk along the gorge and check out this waterfall. There's cones in every other spot so they don't have uh, everybody parking next to each other. And there's a sign that says the parking lot is full, but you know, we don't pay attention to signs. We just keep on going. Most of the time it works in our favor, sometimes <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, let's get walking. All right. I think people are coming up. Let's do it. Taganic Falls State Park, it was only about a 15, 20 minute drive from the campground. Mm -hmm. And when we looked it up online, it looked like there was this super cool, huge waterfall and about like a mile long hiking trail to get to the waterfalls. We just passed the falls over here, and we don't know if there's a bigger falls. Look bigger in pictures. Look a little bit bigger in the pictures. Yeah. And I feel like there's only one falls that I remember seeing, but, but here, you know what? I took a picture of the map. This is smart. See the yellow line right there? Yeah. That's where it ends. The yellow is the gorge trail. That little icon right there is waterfall. Apparently it's about a mile down this way, so we're gonna go check it out. Yeah. Yeah, it was really a neat, mm. a neat state park. It turns out it's one of many in that area. Mm -hmm. uh, but the nice thing about it also was the trail going in and out of the area and to the waterfall was really wide. Perfect, perfect for COVID. For, perfect COVID park. Yes, <laughs> this was one of the very few hiking trails that we've been on that is actually awesome for social distancing yeah. because you really can keep your distance from other people. And nice, nice and shaded. So even on a hot day, I can imagine it's pretty cool in here. Yeah. And you're cool. You're cool. Yeah. I wasn't really sure what to expect, you know, from the pictures, it looks pretty big, but it's the tallest waterfall east of the Mississippi. It's taller than Niagara. It's not yeah. that it doesn't have the volume and the depth of Niagara, 215 feet high. It's, a, it's impressive. It's super impressive. Super. Wow, look at that. Check that out. That's pretty cool. One additional problem about the coronavirus issue is that bathrooms are closed in places like this. And I gotta pee. There is a porta potty in the parking lot, but oh, you can I always, do well with it. You those. can always go over there. I uh, no. <laughs> Our first full free day, Saturday, we decided to do a couple different things. First was we wanted to just go do a quick little starter trail 
very close to the campground. It's a Saturday and it's June 13th and it's 50, 58 degrees outside. <laughs> and it's 1230 in the afternoon. So it's cold. We're gonna go down the road about a mile to this nature preserve because we need a little nature before we put some toxins in our system, AKA <laughs> some wine. wine. Less than a mile from the campground. We're like super easy to find. We drove by it three times. We were like, <laughs> Not hey, well, was that it? Oh crap, we turned around. Oh, wait, that was it. <laughs> we're gonna show you the signage for it right yeah. now. And it's parallel to the road. So when you're driving by it, it's not at an angle to where you can see it. So you just keep going by it. It's set yeah. way back. There's the sign, the very well exposed signage. And at the time there were no cars in the parking area, so we had really nothing to go by except that tiny little yeah, sign. It was funny. We ended up going down somebody's private drive. Oh, it's somebody's house. Looks like, yeah, it's like somebody's house. Okay, this is weird. According to your map, we passed it, and there was, a, and there was another road down there. There was one more road, That's yeah. That's really nice, though. Look at that. Holy cow. I know, but... <laughs> it was funny, but we finally found it, and it was a really cool little adventure, yeah, really. Yeah. It neat. was a pretty rustic trail, but it was mm -hmm. about a mile. and It was easy to follow. It was decently marked. Mm -hmm. There's a footpath, and then there's another trail that takes you back to where you started. It's a wider trail, so I believe that vehicles for the rangers and stuff to take yeah. care of it. And it's not quite as rugged. So we did the footpath on the way down and then the other path on the way up. The upside to this trail is there's definitely nobody here. And I mean, if you have to pee, you don't have to worry about porta potties. This is true. You might have to worry about poison ivy. <laughs> Carve our names into that old oak tree. So one thing we found about this particular area is the wind <laughs> can be zero gusting to 20. <laughs> it's like no wind at all, then boom, yeah. gotta put the awning in. At least the past few days have been like that. But it's really, it's really chilly. You know, we're in the, we're in the middle of the woods, so we don't have any sun on us either. And then yeah. with the wind, and then wind we're right on the water. The you can see it, look, you can see the water right there. Okay. So then we worked up an appetite, of course. Had to go to lunch. And there was nothing open. So we went back to O'Malley's. <laughs> so we went back. <laughs> it's us again. Hey. It only took that long to get the food. You weren't drinking very fast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Did I ever tell you I was in a Guinness pouring contest? You were in a Guinness pouring contest? I was in a Guinness pouring contest. Did you place or win or what? I was runner up. Uh, I didn't get first. I should have. I used to be so good that I could write my phone number in the head of Guinness. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> I didn't really do it very often, but yeah, I, I was going to say, that's not a risky move. Yeah. <laughs> we were going to go hit a winery, finally. Yeah. And we chose a winery that one of our viewers, Gwen, recommended, which is Rasta Ranch. Mm -hmm. And that's on the Seneca Lake side of the Finger Lakes. Technically, I believe that Rasta Ranch is not included in the wine trail. Oh, they yeah. opted out of it, I believe, yeah. from what we heard. They seem like the opt out sort of people. It was an <laughs> awesome place though. We loved it. Very cool, retro, 60s, 60s sort of vibe there. Yeah. Which is what I meant by the, you know, we're gonna opt out of any kind of 
formal trail you guys right. might be putting together. We're going to do our own yeah. thing. There's a lot of neat things, a lot of old albums. And, and their Harvest Host location. Yeah. There, now, was a, there was a visitor there. Out, it's not going to be like for our size RV. Yeah, sure. I was just going to say, if you're a large RV, I don't think that you can park there because this mm. was a, a Class C or Class B, I can't remember. It was smaller, but it was such a cool little location. But they do have plenty of outside space, so we stuck around. We each got a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. Again, they weren't doing the tasting part yet, so we just picked one and each got a glass, hung out outside. There are yard games in this place too, yeah. with like a big Jenga and some like a big Connect Four. It was just a really lovely place and a fun experience. Cheers. He has in his glass a wine called the Grateful Red, and I have a Cab, Cabernet. Mine's called Cabernet. <laughs> very, very inventive name. Yeah, I I didn't know there. This vineyard's not doing tastings yet. I don't know. I did see. Um, some of them online, some other vineyards online said that they were allowed to do tastings now. So I don't know. At least we can get out here and have a glass of wine. Yes. It's, it's a crap shoot on the wine. I, I like mine's a little, a little fruity, but I like it. It's just a beautiful day and this place is pretty cool. And it's just kind of nice to be out and about. It it's a did, chilly day. It is. It did get kind of crowded inside there at the very end and it made me a little, I didn't like it. So I had to get out. But out here it's beautiful. You can see the vineyard mm -hmm. right there. Another really cool, probably my favorite location. My favorite, my favorite too. <laughs> it's so cool. It was another after work adventure because it was staying light really late. Yeah. Busted out of work and went to Watkins Glen State Park. <gasps> So cool. You guys have to check this place yeah. out. It was about 45 minutes from the campground mm -hmm. to get there. I didn't really know what to expect. You know? I looked it up and yeah. it looked amazing, but I didn't know how amazing it was going to be. So the plan is to take the gorge trail. This is the green one. You yeah. said it's opened up to the Mile Point Bridge. Mm -hmm. then, we can, then we have to, you have to, come back down the North Rim Trail, which is good because that means that they're making everybody just go one direction. So we don't have to pass each other. So we don't know, there's gonna be probably some rule breakers, <laughs> but it's not gonna be us. The sign down there said that there are 832 steps on this trail. 832, 31, 30, right. 29. Also on this trail, no dogs are allowed, but it looks like on the Indian Trail or the North Rim Trail or whatever mm -hmm. they are. But right now you can only go one way on that trail. So yeah. okay, if you're wondering, it was eight bucks to park right up the uh, parking lot here, main yeah. entrance down here. Let's do it. Let's go. start these steps. I feel like we're going into a cave, but instead we're going up. This is non-stop steps. <laughs> like. He's coming back, it would be down. I guess it's a different trail, but I would assume so. I'm smiling, you can't tell. You're smiling with your eyes. It just keeps getting prettier and prettier. That was really cool. 
This was like a Tuesday after work because we read that this state park can get super busy. And when you look online at some of these trails, some of the areas of the trails are super narrow. Yeah. And that would force you to be a little bit closer to people than what you might want to be. Definitely right closer now, than six feet in a lot of places yeah. for sure. And that's been kind of a theme of ours now during COVID is to try to go during the week. Mm -hmm. In Watkins Glen, I would say it was pretty sparsely populated. It wasn't very busy. We parked in the main parking lot. It was, it was. It was yes, and, yes and no. I mean, I, I agree and I disagree. Is that, can I do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, of course, well, dear, you could do whatever you I'm want. Going to, uh, we'll, I'll explain why as we get into this hike. We're living in a dream world. So don't forget it. We're living in a dream world. We're living in a dream world. So don't forget it. We're living in a dream world. And they had it set up to where you could go one direction on the gorge trail and then come back down towards the visitor center in the parking area on the Indian trail. Yeah, I so everybody's going the same direction. Right. Supposed to. Supposed to. So I was I was happy and relieved that they had it set up that way. Little did I know that half the people were gonna be coming right at us, going yeah. the opposite direction. Almost to the one mile bridge thing. We hope. This place is freaking nice. It's this is so cool. cool. And there is camping here, but I think that the camping is still shut down. I'm not sure. We're going to check into that. This is amazing. The steps, there are, are a, lot. a lot of them, but there's a lot of- Good exercise though. There are a lot of straight and flat areas too, and places where you can just stop, catch your breath. Mm -hmm. We'll be sore tomorrow. Oh yeah. Definitely a much different terrain for the Indian Trail. Even on the other trail, I was thinking I wanted to tell you guys that hiking shoes or hiking boots are a very good idea because it was very wet in most of this places, so something with traction. And here we were thinking that it was gonna be all downhill on the way back. Yeah, how's it uphill both ways? It's great, it's great. <laughs> There's no steps though. At any moment, place and any time, I'm always open, it's never closing down. Not gonna let you down, I'm gonna go all out on you. <laughs> Looks great, clearly working. Um, this, we didn't expect to come across a graveyard. Cem cemetery. cemetery. In the middle of the state park. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe please and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Let's yeah. keep going. <laughs>
That is pretty cool. Yes. My legs are gonna feel this tomorrow for sure. We are gonna be sore, but it's worth it. That was such a cool hike. hike. <laughs> Low energy. I Time am. to find some food. I'm on energy, but highly recommend this place. It's yeah. awesome. There are a few wineries within just a couple of miles of the campground. So we're like, we are gonna get yeah, we, yeah, to at least one, to one of those. And we had been driving by Thirsty Owl several times and uh, for some reason that one was calling to me. It's like, yeah. who? <laughs> it took all of a minute and a half to get here from the <laughs> from the campground, so that's awesome. Yeah. Because I think they close in 30 minutes. All the wineries seem to close between 4.30 and 6. It's really stupid, especially on a Friday. Yeah, so we've, you know, had to ha not really be able to go during the week, so we're rushing today. So we're going to get in there and check it out. Let's go do it. Is right on the lake, too. So, you know, you look at it, you got the lake, we're like, we got to go there. It's just so beautiful. And Oh my gosh, I was surprised at how much I liked their wine. Yeah, the wine was really good. And there they were actually opening up the tastings. That was the first yeah. day, actually, that they were doing it. And Jimmy was our guide through the wine tasting and he yeah, was, was awesome. awesome. That's Jimmy right there. <laughs> Ooh, it smells pretty. That looks kind of nice. Dry Riesling. Oh, yeah. Just brush my teeth. Could be worse. Could be brush my teeth right before we left. <laughs> So this is the Appalachian. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Ooh, I, li nice. I like that. It's really uh, very refreshing. Is that the Thirsty Owl right there? That's it right there. Sanitize everything. He had a mask on. You wear the mask inside, and then when it's time to taste, you take your mask off. You picked five wines, I picked five wines. It's $5 for a tasting of five wines. And so we would take, right, so I would get different ones than him and then we would swap, we would taste. We each got 10 wines for $10. 10 wines, 10 wines. <laughs> Time to go back inside. Um, time to go back inside. It's all right. You can't see my red wine stained teeth. <laughs> <laughs> we found a couple of wines that we really liked. The Appalachian Dry Riesling was absolutely beautiful. And then we got a red blend, which is a Meritage. And we still haven't had that one yet, which Ooh. is calling our name we to could drink, drink it. it. We could drink it tonight. I know. I wish we had another bottle of that Dry Riesling, though. It for summertime, good. it was really That's delicious. Good, yeah, it's a good summertime wine. Mm -hmm. That was it for the wineries that were open yeah. at that time. We did make one more stop. Yeah, the place that we thought was a brewery, but it was just a beer garden. Yeah, but it was still cool. Yeah, it was. It's, it's called good. Boathouse Beer Garden. Yeah. That was another place with like outdoor mm -hmm. lawn games and you did a flight mm -hmm. of different beers. Peanut butter stout. If we had smell o vision, you would love this. You would love this. <laughs> I gotta try this peanut butter stout. It smells so good. That's delicious. I'll tell you what, that little beer garden was a cool little spot because you could actually see the lake from the little patio there while you're sitting out and you're having your beverages. You can look out on the lake. It was just a cool little vibe. Mm -hmm. The next day, we headed out towards visiting some friends in New Hampshire. And we had a blast. We can't wait for you to see it. Yeah, New Hampshire. Here we come for some chowder. <laughs> We're exploring the Finger Lakes area of North... No, that's wrong. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh my goodness. What do you gotta do? Well, I start chewing gum. We'll you get on the bike. You do. 6.04. Pretty close to when I wanted to leave. I'm gonna put it right here in my seat. That's disgusting. <laughs> you disgust me. Well, I just need to, need to talk and it'll be right here. Okay. This is this is that video? Yeah. What is it? I don't know, but it's smeared and now it's gone. Is it a bug? No, it's it's this, whatever that is. Is it a booger? Stop! <laughs> <laughs> Unless you have really tiny black boogers. I don't know. I think you're safe on that account. Kind We're right. just kind of starting to get their feet in that whole mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. 
What? I don't know. That was weird. Get their feet, get their footing. Yeah. That's, that's where I saw one. That's weird, babe. But we were also high enough up the hill that we could see the lake from our living room, which I is nice. I already said that. Did you? I said it like two times. <laughs> that we could see the lake from our living room? Yes, like two times. Okay. Well, I wasn't listening. <laughs> that's the story of my life. <laughs> I wasn't listening. Oh, I left the door open. That'd be bad. <laughs> <laughs> you just left your door open. Hey, I caught it. You messed up my walking across the bridge shot. Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay. One sec. Apparently I bore him when we are <laughs> filming because he chooses to yawn. I don't know what it is. It's almost like uh, I just get to where I just, I'm just so sleepy. And I hope we're not boring you guys as much <laughs> as we're boring right, him. Let's, let's go. Okay. <laughs> 